how those two clays really exhibit how, how clay acts on a wheel when you're, when you're raising a pot. It's not just, a, you know, when you're look, using one kind of clay, it's, um, it's hard to see how the, where the clay is actually going. Does that make sense? So it just doesn't come straight up, is what you're you saying. You think it just comes straight up and it grows like a like a you know um, plant or something like that, but it's it actually is you're actually torquing the clay, you're turning it, and you're raising it at the same time. So let's see. I'm setting up the um, I'm setting up the pot to do um, the lamination, which is going to be done with some porcelain clay. So if you have a different color clay, like two different colors of clay, that's the best scenario because then you have a nice contrast between clay. You can use stoneware, two different colors of stoneware, and that's fine. It's just more subtle. So um, I'm going to use this trimming tool here, which is like a little um, Dolan tool. It's, I don't know where I got it. I stole it from somebody <laughs> at a workshop or something. That's a nice tool. That's, that looks like my tool. <laughs> I'm missing it. Oh, wait, this JB. I know what the one is. So I'm gonna, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see. I'm changing my mind. Sorry. Um, cut that part out. No make, editing, Michael. I'll make it a little taller. So I'm going to make it a little, I'm going to make my little. Sectional taller, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just cut a little groove. You know, it's probably unnecessary. A lot of things I do are just probably superfluous. You can probably put a um, just put the clay on. You know, uh, put, the, put two balls of clay together. You can do that. Yep, totally. This is or the you th you're saying you could just smash it on without cutting a groove. Yeah, you, just, you can just take a ball of clay and wrap it in coils of um, porcelain or whatever. And it is a very similar effect. It's not as much control. You have more control with this, this sort of thing. You can, can you see what I'm doing here? So I actually do this in a new DVD that comes out any day now. <laughs> this is a preview. I was, I was shut down. They wouldn't let me show you the actual footage. I was just going to get out doing actually doing a demo tonight and just show you a video. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't, I didn't even ask. So, um... Is the title of the video the day Michael Klein sold out? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, or is it called... It's called College it. Fund for Lily. <laughs> it's, called, it's called The Brush and the Wheel. No. It's like a myth or a, a fable of some kind. That sounds like, like a good title. Mine was called Understanding Glaze Glazes, which is not very exciting. Makeup, please. Makeup. Makeup. <laughs> okay, so I've, I've pre-rolled these uh, little plugs of porcelain. Uh, and so um, the part you have to be careful when you go home and try this yourself is not to trap any air into the place where I've carved out in the, in the coil because you don't want you know, air bubbles in there like you would. So what you do is you start at the bottom and hold the coil like, like this and just kind of push it up like that. And that, you know, kind of as it goes up, it kind of pushes the air out of the, the channel. Michael, do you have to ever worry about the differentiation of clay shrinkage? You know, I don't worry about that at all. I mean, I, I've had some issues with dryness. Like if this clay is too dry and this is soft, then you have these kind of they don't they don't stick together so well. If there is that's the probably more important thing. I but I do get that question quite often when I'm teaching this at a workshop. That's the first thing I think because if you know anything about materials, it's um, you know you want to use like um, like materials and porcelain and this red clay is this, this is my local clay my local red clay. You know, it's very different. <laughs> They're probably polar opposites of uh, the red clay is sandy and coarse, not very fine. The porcelain is um, super fine. Super fine. But you don't get spiral cracking or anything like that? 
You know, I, don't, I, I, I think it would be different if I was making a really large piece where there's more stresses on a piece, on a pot. But with this scale, this is about three pounds of clay, I guess. Maybe not. Maybe. Something like that. Um, I've done different ways, like John said, you can just take two balls of clay and cut them in half and then put them together and just do a, put them on the wheel different orientations to get different effects. But this is, you know, this is a uh, thing that started happening more in North Carolina in the early 20th century when there was more mobility. People had cars that were going to Florida, driving through North Carolina. They, so the potters were selling pots to tr tourists more. There were more and more pots were being made for the tourist market versus storage pots, you know, which was most of the, what most of what potters made up until then. So you see a lot of the more ornamental um, pots being made, you know, early 20th century. I'm not sure when Colonel Sanders started his thing, but <laughs> there's a, there's a, if you ever go to Corbin, Kentucky, there's the original Kentucky Fried Chicken. I've been there. And there's a whole thing about how <laughs> that Highway 10 was like the main route between Florida and the Northeast, or Ohio, maybe, yeah. So anyway, so now I've got this thing laminated. I don't know how much time we have left, but um, I'm going to treat this as, this as if it's, almost as if it's a regular ball of clay that I've just centered on here. But I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to, I'm going to cone it, you know, I'm going to push it down and then cone it back up and then push it down again, and that's what's, it's sort of winding up the spiral. You know, and, you, and so if you're a beginning student and you're like, well, how is pottery made, you know? You can see how the clay moves just by a simple, you know, just by doing that. You know, you can see that the clay is actually starting to twist more at the top, no more at the, I don't know, is it twisting on the bottom? The bottom's twisting. So in order to get that, in order to get the top to be, as twisted, I'm gonna I'm gonna compress it again, and that kind of winds up the whole spiral. You can sort of see it. Let's see. Let's do a little scrape. So that's just one compression. I think that's probably all I need to do. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna now check that out. It's pretty cool. It's it's really wound up here. Let's show the cameras. You guys can watch on a jumbotron. <laughs> it's quite a bit twisted now. It's pretty cool. So the, the reason I laminate that way is because I have more control of the space between the white and the red. So there's more even space around those these lines. Right? Wouldn't it be neat to throw that in reverse now? See how that... Well, it would untwist it then. Wouldn't it? Would it turn it the other way? It would wind it back the other way, I think. I remember doing mugs, mugs up at Penland for the Clay Club mug night. We made it for Penland auction. And the only wheel left when I got there was the, the wheel that couldn't be changed. <laughs> and I actually made, I made like 10 mugs in like two hours. Like, I was like exhausted afterwards because it was so, it was so intense. So now I'm just going to throw it as, as uh, you, uh, I would normally. I'm just going to throw a, a sort of a roundish shape. Now to, um, if I was making a unomi or something I was going to cut or trim, I would actually push this area in quite a bit where I wanted to have it because if you trimmed away a lot of the clay at the bottom, you would trim through that section of, of clay that I laminated, right? So that coils like that thick. If I didn't push it in like this, like way in like that, when I trimmed it, I would just trim away that, that spiral. It would be gone because it's only so deep. God, I did what that before I hit, too. Hit this? It looks like it's just, it's just, I don't know what that is. It's a black screen of death. <laughs> oh. Maybe stop it and start another one. I don't know. Okay. It's like, yeah. We've had technical difficulties. Hopefully your camera's still going. Amy. Yep, it is. So I'm just going to, ooh, wow. This bat might come off. <laughs> I'm 
my bed is loose and it's, I'm trying not to uh, lift it up off the wheel by sheer upward. If you could, John, put the, uh, it's working, oh, good. Uh, go ahead and put the hashtag KATCH in the comment section when you have a chance before okay. you forget. That way it'll save it, we can, we can compare it to, save the video. So I've tried the Meerkat in my studio a few times, like, and I've got a, you know, I've got a, good, a little following of people, and a lot of the people have never seen Pottery Made, so a lot of people are in the tech industry and are, who are, early adopters of this of this video streaming and so my hope is that I can imprint on some of the people in <laughs> as being like oh yeah I saw a potter on your cat you know I saw the first potter who ever made you know whoever saw yeah, I don't know it's not that's kind of a generalization but with all the social media kind of things I think that there's a there's a good time to get in on it and I tell people now like oh you have a Facebook page well you know better to get one <laughs> start one it doesn't you know it doesn't cost anything and, but there's a certain amount of um, momentum you can know you can develop in that social media sphere on your own of course if you have like somebody like Martha Stewart or anybody else who shares your your page or whatever it is you can blow up but most of us won't have that it'll just be a slow kind of slog of Developing a, <laughs> <laughs> developing a following, you know. Well, it'll be better when we have a little better bandwidth, because that's why I keep right. off here. I have the same thing in my studio, so I have... But it's surprising how people hang with you. They're like, well, that's okay, I'm, not, I'm just going to watch. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll wait through it, like usually just about a minute um, in my place. And I'm up in my studio, which is about probably how far from the router it's actually not you know you know it's it's a wi-fi so it's it's probably 300 feet maybe from the router it doesn't seem to matter too much but yeah i stopped doing it because um stop doing what the meerkat because it seemed it seemed kind of it was frustrating to me to, to try to do it and not have the right equipment yeah okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna Wrap this up. Make a little. Maybe I'll make a jug out of this. I have enough clay here to make a little jug. Can you see the spiral? So that that'll that'll sort of hide underneath this slurry, you know, the throwing clay. And as soon as I I do a final ribbing. I will bring that, I'll bring the grain out. It's like sanding a piece of wood, right? You bring the grain out of the wood. So you're doing like minimal trimming on this. Yeah, I probably won't trim this one. If I was going to trim, like I said, I would push this part in where I'm at right now. Yeah. And then set it up to where I'll just barely give it a little, little bit of a trim. You I may used just, to put a clear glaze on it. You can put, yeah, clear glaze. Or I have a, you know, a, a, like a tinted glaze, like I have an amber, like an iron, clear glaze with iron in it, or a clear glaze with copper or something like that, it, it, it'll give us, so what happens in that case, the red clay is very dark, so it stays, it's kind of on the black side, and then the porcelain will, of course, show the, more of the uh, color. Um, there's only so much ribbing or scraping I can do at the end, so I'm going to get it to where I want it to be. I'm not going to make a jug, I'm just going to do this. And I want to try to remove some of the um, some of the uh, uh, throwing lines. So Wooden rib is maybe a preliminary ribbing, and I'll do it, I'll do the last one with the metal rib. So it's a real simple, you know, kind of base shape. 
Nothing, nothing. nothing fancy. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, good point. I, what, I've, what I've found is, it's kind of time consuming, but it does bring it out even more if I, if I bisque fire the piece. Like, I don't mess with it too much in this state. I just kind of do one quick ribbing with the metal rib, and then after it's bisque fired, I'll take my diamond sanding pad. Uh -huh. You ever seen those guys? They're like, you can get different wow. grits, and it really polishes it, almost cuts it. But it's almost too clean, like the line's almost too sharp. Lately, I've, I've been leaving it to... Uh, I'll show you what I mean. Just, I don't know if I'm in the way of the camera. Um, don't get dizzy. <laughs> sort of the barber pole, barber pole effect. So... Um, Looks like I've lost a little bit on the bottom. I've smeared, so what happens is the red clay will smear on top of the white clay. And um, that's probably from overworking it a little bit too much. Um, so it takes a little bit of directness and... Okay now. <laughs> it's like, where's the chicken wire cage? So I think that's, I think that's good.